All right, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the next step in well distortion control, and that would be to use uh, pre stress or pre camber. What I've got is I've got two stainless steel plates, um, two stainless steel butts. I've just fit them together. It's an eighth inch stainless. These are 20 inches long. The individual plates are six inches wide. They've got a series of tick tacks on them. And they've been tacked from both sides. And I'm basically going to just run a tick bead down here freehand. I'm not going to add film material. I'm not going to walk the cup. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to guide that along the seam. Um, at uh, preset amp width, right now I have 140 amps is what I uh, tack the plates with. Uh, I think I'll probably uh, leave it right there uh, for the welding uh, process and just keep my travel speed as consistent as I can. I'm not trying to demonstrate how to weld stainless steel 8-inch uh, material. I'm not trying to show the best uh, technique, the best method. I'm simply trying to show that, that when we compare uh, one method versus another for distortion control, how we can get improvements. What we're going to show today is that this first plate uh, will work very badly uh, when I weld it up. Uh, again, I'm just going to run a, a bead down through here, an autogenous weld. The second plate, we're actually going to deform that plate before we weld it. We're going to bend the plate and then weld it with the curve in it. And the effect is, is that we could get rid of the curve completely. Um, I don't expect in this first attempt to fully get rid of that curve. If this comes out perfectly straight when I'm done, uh, the second part, um, I should buy some lottery tickets tonight. I've never done this uh, before. I've just grabbed some scrap material I had in the shop, but we're going to run a bead. We're going to see the effect of distortion um, without any controls. And we know that from steel, the previous video, it worked badly. I would expect stainless steel to work similarly, even though I'm using a different process. But by bending the other plate, we should be able to show significantly less distortion. Again, using pre-stress or pre-camber in this case. So let's go ahead and get started.
Alright, plate number two complete. Now we just sit back and wait. Alright, our stainless steel plate is cooled down. It's, it's warm to the touch, but uh, we don't have to worry about every last ounce of heat. Um, I know my truck's not going to warp beyond usability when it's sitting out in the summer sun. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this free. I'm going to compare the two stainless steel plates. Pre-stress and pre-camber is uh, a very effective means of uh, controlling distortion. Uh, you know, the, the unfortunate uh, fact of the matter is, is it does take some experimentation. Um, this is not intended, as I said before, to be a perfect demonstration, but just to show the concept in action. So, uh, plate number one. Um, if I take the first plate, and I'm going to have to flip this over in order to uh, show the distortion. This actually is uh, noticeably bowed uh, up, if you will. Uh, the other plate is actually bowed slightly in the other direction. I may have, I don't know, over bent it, who knows. But uh, right now, again, without experimentation and just a rough look, uh, I have a total distortion in the middle. And I've got a two inch wide bar. I have uh, seven sixteenths of an inch of total uh, distortion at the midpoint. The other plate, I'm gonna set right on top of it, is noticeably flatter to look at, but we'll, we'll have to take measure to tell the story. Uh, it has approximately a quarter of an inch uh, of total distortion. So not half, but you know, approaching the halfway point uh, by holding that down. All right, another example of pre-stress and pre-camber is uh, the pre-camber part of this. Um, the stainless steel plates that we take welded were pre-stressed, I suppose also pre-cambered, they were bent. Um, this is a technique that uh, definitely involves some guesswork, and it's a tool to have in the toolbox. Um, I've seen examples of pre-stress, pre-camber uh, that worked phenomenally well. Uh, but again, you know, since you are guessing how much to pre-bend the part, um, in this case, I'm going to guess how much to pre-camber the part. Um, it takes some experimentation. And this is not a process that is likely to produce perfection uh, on the first trial. But if you're mass producing a product and you have the opportunity to, you know, have a few uh, attempts along the way to perfect your process, you can in fact <clears throat> figure out how to produce parts that after welding are nearly perfectly straight. Uh, at BIW, one of the things that I see uh, pre-cambered is the keel plates, okay? Keel plates are the bottom, bottom plate of a ship. It's kind of the outer skin on the backbone of the ship. And the keel plate sections come in various lengths, and at times they are fitted together at the Hardings facility. And we used to, at least when I was working out there in welding engineering, fit those uh, with a slight roof pitch to them, so after sub-arc welding they would come out flat. Um, if they got them right, then they didn't have to go to the 500 ton press in order to be straightened. If they didn't get them right, they, they still had to straighten them anyway, and they had the means to straighten them. So again, it was a, a little bit of work ahead that required really no additional time other than putting something under the butt to elevate it. Um, and it may have saved you know a few hours of handling of the material for straightening. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna fit this up. I got a quarter inch backing bar under here. I got a piece of eight inch aluminum. I'm simply gonna place on this side uh, to create a, uh, a misalignment of about an eighth of an inch over the, the width of the plates. 
Um, and I'm going to guess that after welding, this thing's going to be reasonably straight. But again, it's a guess. But to demonstrate the concept, we're going to do it anyway. Here we go. Now that we've got this ground, uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at it. I've got a relatively straight part. I can see from the, hopefully you can see from the camera, uh, this is flat. Uh, I'll get this up closer. I'm doing this blindly, so we'll see how this works out. But that is, that is flat. Um, across the end, again, it is flat. Uh, I might have a slight, slight depression in the opposite direction. I would argue that that's much better than what would have happened had we not fit this with a little bit of uh, pre-camber. Um, this is not obviously something that's going to work every time, like none of the individual techniques alone will work every time, but it's again a tool to have in your toolbox. Um, this works really great on T-joints as well, fillets, anything that you anticipate moving that you can't restrain, that you can't keep square by other means, again, it's a, it's a viable option for you to have. So again, this has been an example of pre-stress and or pre-camera, okay? We'll look for you in the next video.